Johnson just couldn't finish. Yeah. Oh, there's a pass. Take a look. That's a dime dropper right there. We're here with Sharif Cooper, uh, point guard, potential lottery pick, Auburn product. Uh, Sharif, thank you for taking the time, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Appreciate you for having me. You know, I think you're clearly one of the best passers, you know, in this draft. And then you showed you can score the ball as well. What are the things that you think, you know, you can really bring to an NBA team? Um, you know, just a, a great person, um, you know, a great teammate, great leader, uh, someone that, that, that willing to work, that wants to work, um, is going to put in the work, um, just bringing all that stuff uh, without, um, you know, mentioning what I can do on the court, uh, someone who can elevate everyone else, um, you know, just, you know, be a, be a good leader, be a good point guard, um, you know, all those traits that, that come with it. Yeah, no, no question. And so, all right, we're going to break down your film. We're going to look at, you know, different pick and roll reads that you made. A little bit of scoring, but uh, initially kind of more your, your playmaking because I think, you know, that's where you have a chance to be really special, you know, in, in the NBA. So um, your ability to hit the roller, I think, ha has stood out. You know, you can do it from a lot of different angles with either hand. Like, you seem really, really comfortable. So uh, on this possession here, what coverage are they in, and how are you looking to attack this type of situation? Oh, and they're kind of like duh, doubling it all the way out, uh -huh. zoning off the backside. So as I as the dude hedges the screen and stays with me, um, I know it's only one person that's going to be on the backside to to play those um, JT in the corner and, and my big rolling down. So um, I know if I if I look him off. You know he's gonna have to take one of them, so I just decided to look him off in the corner, and he waited long enough. But you know I waited longer, so <laughs> Dylan uh, turned out to be open. Yeah, it's a great pass. So you recognize like they're kind of hard hedging, right? And you yeah. you attack his outside foot, beat it, whip your head around, and then so it's that last defender you're kind of playing those mind games with. Yeah, primo from uh, Alabama. Yeah. Um, you know you're really good at kind of getting off of it quickly. Here with this kind of left hand wrap pass, uh, what are you seeing here? Well, this is a play. And it's called a yo ball screen. So um, JT will be rolling down, and our other big will be rolling up. So normally twenty three comes up, but once he hedged and uh, they switched, dude was late. So I tried to hit him as fast as I could because that's when he was open. Got you. Okay, so then the action is if if they take JT, then you got the other big coming up yeah. for a three. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, and, and what are you? So what are you seeing in that that allows you to get off it quickly? You know, the the dude that's guarding me, he kind of got caught on the top of the screen. Yeah. So he, you know, he rolled perfectly to where he was wide open right there. Yeah. So that play really was to get JT a, a good look right there. Got you. Okay. Yeah, and and that's a that's the right read and, and created a, a easy shot for him that he probably finishes. Nine times out of ten, and so this is what impresses me most uh, about you. You're smiling. You like this one? <laughs> I just remember that everybody was thinking I was crazy for throwing it. <laughs> for throwing this pass? Yeah, because I just turned it over to play before that, and <laughs> I just threw a left hand lob pass. <laughs> so, so there's not a lot of guys 19 years old that can make this pass, right? I mean, I was I was looking through a lot of NBA players to pull in some clips for this, and even amongst some of the best NBA guys, you don't see this pass. As often, uh, what are you looking at in the defense? This is also another play. Um, so JT brought the big out, uh -huh. and, and they switched it. So you know, switch it. If my big sets the right screen. He's gonna have to do trailing him. And this, you know, Jay Will is a, a great player with great um, instincts. So I knew if I just throw it to the rim, he's gonna catch it. Right, and, and, and that opposite big isn't gonna give any help, right? Because he's worried about the shooter. Yeah. You worry about JT, which you can shoot. So what makes you so comfortable? Like, that's a pretty clean pickup right there. Um, what makes you so comfortable passing off the dribble with your left hand like that? I, I've just been in, like, in practice. You know, I used to play, like, five on three. Um, so everybody, five people on defense, and, and I'm running off pick and roll and trying to make a right pass. So just, just practicing so much pick and roll, um, that kind of made me comfortable in every situation really here's another one just curious what you're seeing here as you come off i mean very unselfish um mm -hmm. at, like at this point what are your options and what are you seeing in the defense uh this is actually a play where the, the this is a double ball screen the first ball screen slips out uh for three okay and the second, 
effective when it's an actual pick and roll. So once you know the guy is is so it get caught on the screen and is on top of my own um, big, you know, I only it's only it's a two on one. Yep. So once I got him with a little pump fake, I knew he was over, and, and my big was gonna be wide open on the roll. Yeah, that's a great pass, and being able to fit the ball, you know, in those tight windows, that's what we see. You mentioned him earlier from a guy like Chris Paul, right? Um, mm-hmm. What do you what do you like about this play, and, and what do you see in his decision? He's reading that, that offside offside guy, and as soon as R.J. Barrett, you know, stepped the wrong way, you know, he found the right pass. Yeah, exactly. So he he's basically R.J.'s got to pick his poison, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, he can fit the ball through so many windows that a lot of guys can't. And he's also really good kind of dragging out that big. Um, mm-hmm. What do you see here? Um, he, He's dragging out Nerlens Noel and, and knowing that, you know, they not they not switching, but mm-hmm. he coming. So he dragged him out just enough for Aiden to be open. Yeah, and it's a lot of those little things that, that we're going to get into. And, and we've seen that from you, too. Really good patience here, kind of the rescreen, where you're going to drag out Sar. Mm-hmm. And then that kind of sucks in that that weak side defense a little bit as well, right? Yeah, it was a, a lot of. A lot, I, I watched this this game after. Uh-huh. It was a, uh, my roller was a, open a lot of times on that live. I wish I would have seen it, but you know I seen that after the game where I could have made that adjustment. Yeah, but being able to manipulate ball screens like that, I think, is a big strength of yours. And so, I mean, you you can hit the roller, right? You can hit the lift guy. We we've talked about that, but. You know, not a lot of guards um, are so comfortable hitting that kind of deep corner, right? Uh, mm-hmm. What take me through this play here? Uh, this is just a, a, a regular ball screen where Trendon was so far um, over, you mm-hmm. know, skip over. He could have shot it, but he's not really. He was a, he's a driver, so yeah. But uh, yeah, that Trendon was just you know stuck in the in the paint, so I just threw it. Even again here, um, kind of similar pass when when you're on the move. Uh, take me through this one. So this this um, you know this is a play where the, the where the pain is spread out for me to get downhill. Okay, low handoff into yeah, a ball screen. Like zone Herb Jones in the in the paint a lot. So when I see him just sitting there, I figured the corner would be open. Yeah, and again that's a, a great pass on the move going to your left. Something we see from guys like Trey Young, guys like John Morant. Um, do you mm-hmm. study Trey at all? Yeah, I, I watched Trey a lot at Oklahoma. I watched a lot of his games when I was just sitting in the room at college. So yeah. I was just watch a lot of basketball. I, watched, I didn't recognize what he was doing at Oklahoma. And when I watched it, it was crazy. Yeah, I think like he plays a lot more like shooting off deep threes and, and stuff like that like from the logo. But I think you guys do have some similarities with – how you handle the ball, how you change pace, your pace overall, like your vision, pa- passing off the bounce. Do you see any of that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, for sure. And this is kind of a similar pass, you know, to what we just showed. Um, this a read you can make at the next level, you think? Yeah, definitely. So what, what do you like about that? Uh, he's, he's throwing it over a six, seven <laughs> foot nerf. So that's one of the crazy things, but... Um, just seeing how Covington, Covington is so stuck in the paint and, and being able to see that pass, is, I feel like that's special. Yeah, no question. And I think that's what you're going to look like you know, at the next level as well. Another guy who can really pick teams apart with his passing, John Morant. Um, have, you, have you studied him at all? Yeah, a lot when he was at Murray State. Um, you know, that high ball screen where he, him and everybody else are flattened out, so... Just seeing all the reads he was making is, you know, job ran is different. Yeah, we have some uh, some clips to show some of the similarities. I mean, when it's a high ball screen, big is dropped. You get downhill, you'll use that cross jab a little bit, like like mm-hmm. he uses, um, kind of similar footwork handle. Uh, but again, you're really really good at, at hitting those corners and then probing too, kind of keeping your dribble, um, very patient. And then here, uh, so sometimes they'll cut out of that corner too, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what's what's the situation here? You know, it's it's a ball screen where they play the actually good defense, but you know, Herb Jones is he's he's so stuck on zone that he he can't really see the corner. So once he cut, I just knew he was gonna be wide open because he he didn't know where JT was. So you're watching his eyes. He thinks he's spaced to the corner, and then yeah. you just throw the lob, right? Yeah. How much of being a point guard is that like nonverbal communication? Oh, it's a lot. Um, that I I speak to him. You know, I, I tell my guys to, to run, run, run. Like, we we speak so much before. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, it, it just comes naturally. Like, even on the, on a break where I just always throw it up, I, I always tell them, like, be ready, like, look for it. So, uh, when it happens, it, it doesn't even, we don't even have to speak on it. So, uh, just a cut like that is, is him knowing that I'm going to throw it. Yeah. Now that's nonverbal. So it's 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 so much that goes on nonverbal that doesn't need to be actually you actually say it. So I feel like that's a, a big part. Yeah, no question. And you can see it on the floor, you can see it in your numbers and your film. So all right, and then these pick and pop situations, sometimes they were aggressive hedges, right? I mean they, they were putting two on the ball. Um what do you see here? Any anything you would have done differently? Yeah, I would have got rid of it fast. I you know, I could have uh you know, stuck my foot in the ground, uh, reverse pivoted and, and hit him. Um, but when I seen him head so high, I wanted to kind of get around him yep. too much, and I held on too long. Got you. So get off it a little bit quicker, you're saying, or pivot and hit back with your right hand? E either one. Either one would have worked. Yep. Um, and then sometimes maybe it, e it is even like a quick behind the back too. Like yep. you have that in your game? Mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah. But, I mean, still, make make the right read. He knocks this down. Um, but if you are able to get that out quick, then mm -hmm. A.J. Lawson's got to make a tougher decision, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then your patience, your pace, really good coming down to your left. Uh, what do you see here? Uh, just, you know, they, they both ran with me. Uh, yep. that, that is the play of pick and pop. So, uh, I see that he was open. I dribbled a little too much than I would have liked, but, you know, it still worked out in the end. Yeah, no, that's a great pass. You know, creates a long closeout, wide open shot. Um, and then guys like Trey, a little bit yeah. of sauce, right? Yeah, that behind the back, there it is right there. Yep. Are you, so are you going to be someone who brings kind of that, that entertainment value to the NBA too? Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. Where, where, does, where does that mentality come from? Because you're so uh, exciting. Yes, being from up north, uh, you know, if if you ever see my dad play, uh, you you will see where I get it from. But um, yeah, just being from up north, having that up north blood, um, you know, that 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 kind of carries on to the court. So CP, you mentioned like getting to the mid range and and kind of using your body, uh, keep defenders on your back, all that. Like he's he's the master of that. Um, yeah. W what do you like about this? Uh, just just his patience in a, in a cluttered situation. Uh, you know, he, he got him on his back, and all he did was, you know, give him a little body, take a little step back, and, and shoot over him. So, well, I mean, once you once you hit him, you know, it's, it's kind of over for the for the contest. So, that he mastered that. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes it's almost like he's playing in slow motion. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what you see from a lot of the best guards. And, and we've seen it from you, too. Um, you know, whether you're snaking ball screens or – here kind of dragging it out a little bit. And then the inside hand finish. Um, mm -hmm. Take me through this one. Um, you know, I, I didn't I didn't have nothing coming off the initial ball screen. So um, I just probed it, uh, you know, switch sides of the floor, let my big roll behind me. And when I see, I couldn't, if I would have laid it with my right hand, he probably would have blocked it. So, you know, trying to go with a quick finish and catch him off guard. Yeah, and so much of the NBA is those quick finishes. Um, um, and, and Jaw's been really good too, keeping guys on his back. Um, and then the float game. Where are you at with your floater? I uh, shoot that all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't show as much. I showed a little bit, but you know, I feel like I could show a little more. But yeah, I feel like I got a great floater. Yeah, and there from the elbow, even um, you know, got got the range with it. But one of the things I liked most about you is like you got to the line over eight times a game. You know. Mm -hmm. um, what allowed you to be so effective getting to the free throw line, even though maybe you're not the, the biggest guy? Just understanding uh, basketball. Uh, you know, I watch so much basketball. So just understand, watching the NBA a lot, you know, I learned a lot about how to, you know, draw little fouls. Um, you know, a lot of hand, off hand work when I had a ball. Um, you know, just sometimes just running into people, actually. And, yeah. <laughs> You know, just manipulating the defense and, and, and knowing how to get that little, little foul call. You know, I've learned that throughout, throughout my years of playing. I mean, you're slow to fast. Like, it is, I think, one of the best, you know, in, in the NBA. What's the key to that? Like, being a guy who it almost looks like you're just relaxed, you're chilling, and then boom, you're off. Yeah, you know, that's, that's major key because 
nine times out of ten, they looking backwards to see the ball screen. So once I'm acting like I'm not doing nothing, then I just go. You know, it catches them off guard a lot. And so we saw it with kind of a basic hesitation, but you're really good with these like through the legs accelerations too. Um, what, what's mm-hmm. the key to this move? Um, just you know, I, I practice that a lot. Being able to switch, um, switch hands without slowing down, whether mm-hmm. that's across between leg behind the back. So, um, you know, this this game they were doubling like, but you know, before half court. So, you know, just trying to make something happen. You know, they were going on the run. So, um, just trying to make something, make a play. Yeah, and, and your footwork is is so good um, as a ball handler. I think that's such a key to being so dynamic, right, that, that people almost forget about is your feet. Yeah, definitely. That's the uh, first step is something I work on a lot. And there's another one, too. Kind of got them dancing. You're going to split it. Um, mm-hmm. Is that, how, like, w- w- what do you see here? Did, I mean, they, I didn't, you know, I told my coach you know, as soon as the game started, I didn't like the ball screen defense. So, um, you know, he just told, put me in a lot of ball screen situations. This time, he's just sitting back, so. Um, you know, it was a ton of space to, you know, go wherever I wanted. And, and this was so early, you know, my mind isn't even thinking like, you know, to, um, you know, this man's about to take a charge. You know, it's the first game. So uh, they actually had to play just like this in a, in a couple more clips and, I, um, you know, made a better read. Yeah, and it's the right, it's the right pass, right? Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. you don't see this as much in the NBA. You know, the, the, the charge I hate the most in college is like if you're, Going up in transition, you get rid of it, and then a guy's waiting for you like three steps after. Yeah, yeah. That happened to me at Ole Miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. Um, but again, I think just to show how dynamic you are, you know, splitting ball screens with those type of moves. And, I mean, Trey, is, he gets yeah. wherever he wants on the floor, right? Yeah, that in and out is serious. Yeah, it really is. And if you look, a lot of this is because he's a threat from the logo. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, That's... look at how high they are. Yeah. And, and so then he's able to just get downhill, dissect you, put shooters around him, and then it's it's a wrap. Um, but you're, again, like, similarly able to just get wherever you want on the floor. Um, I mean, look at the ground you cover with this dribble, right? Mm-hmm. And then kind of dodging that, that uh, the charge, really good body control. Um, you know, that's, that's a big-time move. And then just kind of winding down here, wanted to go through some of your different uh, moves when you got a big on an island, right? Um, mm-hmm. So you love these in and outs, huh? <laughs> yeah, because you know I, I faked it like I was gonna go inside. He, he's he's a big big dude, so you know I knew I was gonna be uh, quicker than him, so I just tried to get down here. Yeah, I mean he, our poor our poor big guy here, look just no chance. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Your eyes lit up on that one. Um, yeah, he like he like seven foot seven one too. He don't look as big as on his on his TV as he do in person. <laughs> Yeah, just kind of feet in mud there, um, but hit him with that hard in and out. And yeah. CP, he uses this in and out a lot to set up his mid range too, right? Mm-hmm. How important? Because how important is it for point guards to really kill those in between spots? Because oh, the analytics will say you know it's not an important shot, but if you look at the playoffs, it's like that you have to make those shots uh, yeah. in, in crunch time, right? Yeah, Jimmy Butler is big in mid range. CP three, you know, he's a hundred percent from mid range. So just being able to get that little bit of space that in and out creates all the space you need. And once he gets that little bit of space, you're not gonna block it. So he, he's great at that. Yeah, no question, really good. And then here the step up. This was what I was talking about a little bit of the John Morant kind of cross jab move, right? Mm-hmm. And then drawing the foul. What what do you see here as you come off? You do a great job of forcing him into the screen, right? Yeah, I think a little step back right here would have been uh, got me all the space I needed. Um, a little step back right there and shot a little mid-range, but you know I got the foul, so it, it worked out. No, it's a great move. Um, the step up, a little change of pace, draw the foul, and again, you're going to have so much space you know, in the NBA. And this is what we see from Ja a lot. I mean, yeah. That's violent, right? Yeah, definitely. Do you, do you, like, do you use this move often? Yeah, yeah, I love that move. I work on it a lot, especially in transition. Some you can just get to without having to, you know, cross crossover or expose your dribble. Yep, and and you know, people talk about the NBA being so switch heavy, but teams still like to play out of these drops, um, mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of a time where you can eat, right? Yeah, definitely. So yeah. what do you, what do you see here? Uh, I rejected it. Um, could have kept him on my body a little bit. Uh, been a little. 
been a little more patient. Uh, dude is wide open on the pop. Um, just been more patient. Uh, explore my options a little better. Yeah, and, and again, though, I like that you you don't shy away from these type of bigs. You know what I mean? Like, you welcome mm -hmm. contact. You'll go into the body. You're, you're looking to draw a foul, right? Um, yeah. Just might be Gobert or Embiid or, or Giannis at the next level. So maybe it's maybe it's a float. Maybe it's some of that finesse we talked about. Um but you're really good getting wherever you want on the floor. And, and, and that's kind of what impressed me most, you know, about you this season. It's just your command of the game. And um, we showed one earlier, but you like these little inside hand flips, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of my only way to get that on the rim is the inside hand flip. Yeah. And, again, that's kind of all the pieces together, right? The in and out, the pace, get it up off the glass. Um, that's, that's a big-time finish. And then from guys like Trey, even though he's little – I mean, that's Embiid, right? Yeah. Just a little hesitation. Same foot, same hand, flip it up. Um, and then the last couple clips here, I think the biggest key for all this to come together for you, right, is if teams are going to dart under like this, like they've mm -hmm. done on CP, just got to make them pay, right? Yeah, definitely. And, and, I can't, can't wait to, to get in these workouts and show that. So I'm ready. I can't wait. And this is exactly that, right? So Ole Miss game. They're, I mean, they're, they're talking through it. Maybe we're going to switch. What are we going to do? They're kind of daring you. And then mm. splash. Um, so you need you need teams fighting over the top of screens, right? And that's that's when yeah. you can be that that dynamic. What are the, what have been uh, the keys for you to, like, make that jump as a shooter like you just talked about? Um, Just, you know, I feel like I, in, in, the, in the college season, you know, in the, in the beginning, um, you know, I, I was – so tired, my wind was blown. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm in the, in the shot clocks, um, trying to get a, a jump shot, being, you know, extremely tired. So I feel like I lost kind of my technique um, throughout the season. But, um, you know, just being able to take so much time and out of the season and just get that technique, get that rhythm back, you know, I feel like I'm in an amazing space jump shot wise. So, you know, something I can't wait to show and, and you know, get out there and, and prove myself. And lastly, before I let you go, so there are all these players all over the world, right, who are trying to make it. Um, guys, mm -hmm. you know, coming out of Europe now, coming out of college, G League, Australia, all over. Uh, why is it that, you know, Sharif Cooper is going to be somebody who has a chance to be a star at the next level? Um, just because of those guys that paved the way before me. Um, you know, the Dane Lewis, the Trey Youngs, the... The John Morant, they've showed that, you know, six one, six, six two, six foot guys can do it. Um, you know, in the in the in the league that, you know, loves six eight jumping out the gym guys. So um, just those those guys that paid away before me, you know, I feel like they've put, you know, guys like me in a great position to be successful and and and, and learn from them. So I feel like um I'm in a great space, um, getting ready for these for these draft workouts and, and the whole process. So I feel like I'm in a great space. Yeah, well, Sharif, it's it's been really cool to you know kind of dive into your film. I mean, like I said, you you make plays that I don't think anyone else in this draft can. So um, you know you're kind of tailor made for that ball screen heavy NBA game, and I think fans are going to be excited to to see that at the next level. So I appreciate you taking the time, man. Appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.